Please forgive our technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> Well, without the t technical difficulties, you wouldn't have that picture up there. That's true. <laughs> that was a technical triumph. <laughs> Just like we are technical triumphs. Right? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we're designed. We're designed. God has the best technology. You know, the devil thinks he has the best technology, but God always has a better. Just don't try to hug it and love it. Uh, Just don't try to love, hug it and love it. Don't try to hug it. Yeah, yeah, I like that cactus, right? You don't want to hug that cactus. No, not until you burn off all the spine. We'll talk about that. But yeah, oh God, he makes all things new. Especially us. You know, Mom and Dad, we went to a special sermon this morning in Lockhart at a church called Abundant Church. And that's what the pastor was talking about. We're all new creations in Christ. We're all new creations in Christ. I can turn it up a little bit. Because he makes us, old things are passed away. All things have become new. And so what the pastor recommended doing was reading Ephesians chapters 1 through 3, which we've been studying a lot of in the past couple months. Um, I look back at Ephesians chapters 1 through 3, this afternoon, and sure enough, there were like five or six scriptures in there that we covered in the past six, in the past two months since the church started here. So I would definitely advise everybody here, go back in Ephesians 1 through 3, remind yourself that you're a new creation in Christ. And every moment, he's bringing me closer and closer and closer to him, making me more and more and more like him, you know, and you know, in a minute we'll, we'll figure out, you know, how how and why life is truly just like a cactus, you know. But, you know, first I want to talk a little bit about what God says about people who gamble. Go ahead. And so, a little bit of homework for y'all. If you want to see in the Old Testament what God was talking about. this Gambling is just one of the many issues that people... Uh, encounter in life and it ends up getting a, getting a hold of them. And it becomes an issue in their life that just continues issuing and continuing to curse those people around them. Um, so it's really a disease. And uh, so Malachi 3 verse 5 says, And I will come near to you to judgment. And I'll be a swift witness against the sorcerers, and against the adulterers, and against false swearers, and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages. Those are all the people that try to make people work for slave wages, minimum wage or less. The widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right. Now these are all the people in the world that are trying to separate the fool from his money. We've already talked about Facebook, we've already talked about a few other evil companies on the planet, um, but really it's all the thieves, uh, people that make their living through stealing by taking advantage of the disadvantaged. And gamblers, what I found is that most gamblers are these kinds of people. You know, they're in it, to steal. Because gambling is not much more than legalized theft, folks. There's no service being sold. There's no pro there's no, no service being provided. There's no product being sold. Nobody's getting anything except for negativity. You know, because you're all stressed and worried that you're going to lose your money. You know, and, and then you get a temporary high when you win. But really, you're stealing, folks. Face it. You're stealing. And whoever partners with a thief will see in a moment hates themselves. So we've got to be careful what we do in our lives with gamblers who are thieves. All right? So it says, and fear not me. So these people don't fear God, saith the Lord of hosts. Go ahead. There shall come in the last days, from 2 Peter 3, Verses the second part of verse 3 through 7. Scoffers walking after their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? We all know Jesus is coming soon. 
Because we're of the truth. We're not scoffers, right? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. Oh, yeah. Same channel, different days of the world, right? We know differently. We know differently. We know the truth. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. So remember last week we talked about the waters. That's us. We're the waters that are above the heavens. And many are the ones that are below the heavens. But now it's our job to rescue those who are waters that are above the heavens, but are in the possession of our enemy. Because they're walking in their lusts. Because they're walking according to the ways of the world. Because they're fornicating with the devil, which we'll get into in just a moment here. And so, whereby the world that then was, being overflowed with water, perished. And only seven souls survived. Remember, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Because he was an upright man. He had faith in God. And everybody here, everybody watching online, who has faith is upright and has favor with God. We found favor with God. We talked about that last week. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store. Jesus is the word of God. He keeps the heavens and the earth in store. He keeps them running. He keeps us running. He keeps everything running. He fills all things. Remember we talked about that in Ephesians 4. But they are reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. I know you guys are sick and tired of these ungodly men and women on this planet. And now it's the youth that's infected the youth too. Because they've been taught that evil is good. And they're continuing to be taught that evil is good. And teach them that good is evil too. They think we're evil because we beat the truth. Go ahead. God says, be still and know that I am God. So let's take a little break here. Have a moment of silence and just be still and know. Thank you, Jesus, that we know you. Thank you, Jesus, that you're living in our hearts, that you're surrounding us with your love, with your presence, with your mercy and grace, with your favor. Lord Jesus, would you please continue to lead us every step of the way until we meet you face to face and walk into eternity with you and with each other and to the eternal joy of the Lord. And may you continue to help us only do what you want us to do. Only say what you want us to say. And only think what you want us to think. Including during this service, Lord Jesus. May you bless it. May every heart be open to your word. May every mind be open to your wisdom, your understanding. And may every soul here and online experience your almighty power. In Jesus' name. And so Proverbs 21 talks about greed. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. I guess it's easier to gamble than to work. Hmm, interesting. He coveteth greedily all the day long, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. God loves a cheerful giver. Giving reaps receiving. Right? You reap what you sow. You hold on to what you got. Just a matter of time before you lose it all. But you give it, you sow the seed, it grows, and then the fruit gets multiplied back to you. Cheerful givers. Make God happy. Remember, Jesus pointed out the lady that put her two cents in. And that was all she had. <laughs> and that's what the pastor talked about this morning, you know? I'm going to encourage everybody here to be generous with everybody, not just with this ministry, with everybody. When you go to a restaurant, give an extra tip. When you go buy something, pay more than they're asking. I've done that 
consistently for the past several months, and my finances have turned around. And they're continuing to multiply. And that's going to happen any time you guys are cheerful givers in all areas of your life. Spare not. Spare not. So Proverbs chapter 15, 27 eight says, He that is greedy of gain troubleth his own house. If you want some trouble in your house, Oh yeah, give in to greed. Give in to greed. You have to see how much you can get from your fellow man and fellow woman, or fellow child, and see how much it troubles your house. Or even accept money from a thief, from someone who's won money via gamble. I've done that. And it caused all kinds of havoc in my finances, in my house. You know, next time I was given the opportunity to accept stolen money, which was gained through gambling, which is stolen, I had to turn it down. I paid it back with, with interest plus a little extra more just to make sure it didn't trouble my house. Go ahead. Oops. So, about thieves and stealing. Psalm 50, 18b says, Thou sawest, thou sawest a thief. Then thou consentest with him and hast been partaker with adulterer. So, when we put up with gambling, when we put up with Dishonest games of any type, embezzling, cheating, lying, covering the lies with more lies. <laughs> God knows everything you do. You can't hide. You are partaking with adulterers. They are disobeying God and worshiping money and worshiping other things, worshiping themselves and their pocketbooks, and their cars, and their houses, and all this stuff is going to burn up, turn into tar. Proverbs 29, 24 says, Whoso is partner with a thief, hateth his own soul. So if you hire someone who's gambling, you hate yourself, because you're a partner with that person. He heareth cursing and berateth or discloses or reveals it not. You just keep it to yourself that this person's a thief. You don't tell anybody about it. It's okay. It's just, it's legal, right? It's legal. So is gay marriage. So is abortion or was and still is because of the executive order from our dictator. John 10 1 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. There's only one way to have you gotta live by the Bible, and you gotta obey and serve Jesus Christ. That's how we entereth into the sheepfold by the door, Jesus Christ. He's the door into the sheepfold and the good shepherd. Any other way is theft. You're stealing from God. And stealing from people. And you're going to get punished. Exodus 20, 15 says, Thou shalt not steal. Can it be any clearer than that? I don't think so. What else we got? Let's see. Oh, yeah. A little bit of relief. From <laughs> the law, right? The law says don't steal. People are breaking the law. Breaking the law, breaking the law. There's a song called Breaking the Law. People love that song because they love to break the law. But we're not law breakers. We're law abiders. We love the law. We love God's word. We love the Bible because it teaches us how to live the blessed life. The proper life. The straight and narrow life that is protected and shielded from evil from the evil that is getting more and more and more evil and more and more and more dark. We're entering into the heart of darkness, folks. It's almost arrived. So I got a song here that was written by Jesus and that I received part of from the prophetess Anastasia who was here last week running the computer. I don't know if you remember her. She's a prophetess because she knows a lot of things that are going to come to pass, just like I do. I'm a prophet, too. So, let's go. It says, He died on that cross for you. Be obedient, be true. He is making all things new. All the, all the, 
time, won't you make him number one? You will never be alone, he will take us to our home. Jesus, you are mine, walk with Jesus, you will never fail. Your God will prevail in the darkness to come. Walk with Jesus, every step you take, struggles every break, when your Lord's work is done. Now prepare yourself to fight, all true Christians do what's right, always walking in the light. Jesus helps us see there's an army forming now, preaching testimonies how every enemy will bow to authority. Walk with Jesus, you will never fail. Your God will prevail in the darkness to come. Walk with Jesus, every step you take. Strongholds always break when your Lord's work is done. Time to overcome the pain. Christ is life and dying's gain. We will never be the same. Jesus makes us new. In your weakness, he is strong. He will never steer you wrong. Let him give you a new song. His word gives to you. Walk with Jesus, you will never fail. Your God will prevail in the darkness to come. Walk with Jesus, every step you take. Strongholds always break when your Lord's work is done. To him let your heart stay true. Watch the miracles he'll do and the wonders he'll show you. When your best you try, if you're sinking, start to bail. The Lord's work shall never fail. With the angels we shall sail. We meet him in the sky. Walk with Jesus, you will never fail. Your God will prevail in the darkness to come. Walk with Jesus, every step you take, strongholds always break when your Lord's work is done. One more time. Walk with Jesus, you will never fail, your God will prevail in the darkness to come. Walk with Jesus, every step you take, strongholds always break when your Lord's work is done. Amen! Walk with Jesus. You'll never fail as long as you're walking with him. All right, space bar. Oh, space bar. Testimony about marrying the devil. <laughs> That's kind of a strange testimony, isn't it? It's scary. <laughs> scary. So God recently showed me that without a doubt, I have been an adulterous wife for quite some time. If you wish to see the truth about yourself, <coughs> And every single true follower of Jesus, read Ezekiel chapter 16. But only if you're prepared for some, for some correction. <laughs> and then once you can handle it, read it again. Read Ezekiel, it again. 15. Ezekiel 16. Ezekiel 16. 16. Oh yeah, if you want to stay, be humble, 16. read Ezekiel 16. And with yourself in mind, because really it talks about every single follower of Jesus Christ. So I plan to do this, read that chapter anytime I get prideful, controlling, unforgiving, or angry. And I need to remain meek and humble so that, like all of you, I may inherit the new heavens and the new earth, along with everything else God has planned to give me and you from the moment he comes back in the clouds to get us all the way into eternity. Isn't God good? All the time. So he works so hard for us. Every moment, every minute, every hour, every day. So let's take a moment to praise him in our hearts and out loud if you want. If you have a prayer language, 
Now it's time to do some battle, folks, because the enemy is just waiting to try and take more from God and Jesus and us, his people. That's what he wants to do. Keep on stealing, killing, destroying. So let's pray. Praise God. Let's give him thanks and let's speak to those mountains in faith so that Jesus will move them, every single one of them. Right, I'll start off and I'll just keep going. I'm just going to pray in tongues. And give God the praise. Lord Jesus, we praise you. We give you thanks. We worship you. We give you the glory. Hallelujah. It is done. It is done. You said it is finished. Every battle is won. Every victory is ours. It is truly yours, Lord Jesus. But you make it ours. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, let's get some correction, some exhortation, some reproof, and some instruction in righteousness. Go ahead, Mom. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 15 to 20. From the Authorized King James. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Who does our, belong to? our body belong to? Members of Christ. Christ. Yeah. Christ. Because we're his life. We belong to Jesus. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? Hmm. Anybody know who the great harlot is? Mm -hmm. The devil. He flirts with every one of us every moment of every day. Yeah, he wants you to give him your fealty, your mind, your mouth, your body. He wants you to submit to him so he can control you, steal from you, kill you, and destroy you. And that's exactly what happens every single time you perform self-pleasure without thinking only about your spouse. Think about it. Mary and the devil. Mary and the devil. Make them the members of a harlot. God forbid! What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? One flesh, folks. It will become one flesh with the devil. For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. you got to walk in the spirit. In the flesh, in the spirit. Flee fornication. Yes, when you sell pleasure and you're thinking about anything but Jesus, if you're not married to a human being, you are fornicating, folks. There's no question about it. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. Yes, we're sinning against ourselves. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? which ye have of God, and you are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's, not ours. God's. God's. We belong to God. So anytime you think about someone other than your spouse during the act of physical pleasure, you are committing adultery against Jesus and marrying the devil with your mind and body, which causes lots of intimacy with your true husband, Jesus. So the devil steals from you. Death in the flesh, because it is sin, the devil kills you. And destruction, a part of your soul, because you become one flesh with the destroyer, whose goal is to destroy your body and soul in hell forever. So when God showed me this truth, I knew I could never, ever, 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 ever perform self-pleasure again, unless I could be sure the only person I thought about the entire time was my husband, Jesus. And there have been a few times this has happened in my life, as there will be in yours. If you do not have an earthly spouse. But all of the other times, I was having sex with the devil. Yeah. Marry the devil. No two ways about it. Think about it. Consider the wisdom of God for yourself. And then decide for yourself if you want to have sex with the destroyer of your soul. The killer of your body. The thief who comes to take away everything that Jesus wants to give us. 
So I personally have decided to say no thanks to the devil. He just doesn't float my boat anymore. You know, I've got a handsome, loving, protective, wise, faithful, and true husband who nourishes and cherishes me every moment. I don't need a murderous, thieving, destructive harlot for a wife. Nor do you. So, let's lighten it up with some adultery jokes. <laughs> Go ahead, Mom, space bar. One more time. Adultery jokes. Do infants enjoy infancy as much as adults enjoy adultery? Oh, that's Probably funny. not. <laughs> that's kind of funny. Yeah. Go ahead. Adults make better fighters than infants. Yet, more battles are won by infantry than adultery. Some truths are hard to hear, folks. And when you resist the devil, he flees. Go ahead, Mom. A pastor discovered his bicycle had been stolen. He decided to use it as inspiration for that week's sermon and began writing, on the, writing the Ten Commandments, especially Thou shalt not steal. Then he got to Thou shalt not commit adultery and remember before he left his bike. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. So, hmm. one more time. Yeah. So now... So we have all the folks willing to hear the truth and receive it and accept it for what it is. Just the truth. Just the truth. Just wisdom. To keep you from the evil. Keep you from the evil one. That's what he wants to do. Because we pray that in the Lord's Prayer. Right? Deliver me from the evil. That's what the truth does, folks. It delivers us from evil. And that truth I just preached. Billions of people are blinded to that truth. Billions of people are married to the devil because of the lies they believe. They don't know the truth. Well, let's see. Life is a cat. So, you know, I had a dream about a month ago about, uh, I told you, the lady and her friend favor. Well, when she showed me the structure of heaven, at the bottom of it was a cactus. And I realized that was kind of off. I was like, why would a cactus be at the bottom of the structure of heaven? So I talked to my friend Lisa, who I'm hoping will produce my albums. And she said, you know, when you're in the desert, which is what we are right now, this is a desert of faith. For faith, it's a desert. You know, this world is a desert. And when you're in the desert, the only thing you have to eat is cactus, right? It's full of spines, and, but it's delicious, right? Cactus is, I have cactus. But those spines, you know, you've got to get through them to get to the fruit. You've got to get rid of the challenges that are in your way to get to the blessing. And the best way to do that is with, anybody know? Jesus! The Word of God! Because the best, you know, the easiest way to cook, to, to prepare cactus is to just put it over a flame. And it just burns all those little spines off. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't burn the cactus. Cactus is heat resistant. Just makes it more delicious. Just like us, right? We're a cactus. He's making all things new by burning off the spines that we've acquired over the years. All the lies that we believe, all the bad habits we've grown accustomed to, all the false doctrines, all the you know idols, and all the other things that that make us spiny to him. He's burning them off with the flames, the flames of life, life of the cactus, right? Life comes our way and it challenges us, and we're either going to respond in faith or we're going to respond in fear. Like someone responded earlier. But you know, that's okay. I believe he's coming back. And you know, Jesus is coming back and you know, he's gonna get us. He's gonna get us. But a few people know about the four demons that are constantly trying to get control of my mind, mouth, and body. And yes, that is a progression. If first you believe a lie, then you start speaking it, 
And finally, you start acting upon it. So, Susan, how, what's the progression of being demonized? I just said, first you believe a lie, right? Then, speak the lie, and then? Do the lie. Do the lie. That's right. That's how you get demonized. So last week was very interesting encounter with the demons of pride and control. Um, the other two that constantly attack me are unforgiveness and wrath. So you see, a few months ago, Dad's health took a turn for the worse, but recently it started to and is now continuing to get much, much better thanks to his faith, thanks to the stripes of Jesus and his healing power. Because all lasting healing can only come from Jesus. He's the source of all true healing, of all lasting healing. But because dad had received so many oppressions from the devil in the form of health challenges, it became very difficult for mom to care for him and run the household at the same time. So she entered a depression the last over a month, with, in fact, in my, which infected my dad as well. But God. But God. But God. Right? But God. God. If it were not for God, they'd still be stuck in a depression. Or worse, but God saw the situation. And God had compassion. God had compassion. And upon me too. Even though I know I don't and never will deserve it, this compassion. Nothing I can do to deserve this compassion. Because I'm a sinner. Because that's all you got. But God chooses to bless who he chooses to bless. And he chose us. Chose you, 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 everybody online. Chose you. That's right. So he chose to write a song for my mom called Powerful, which you guys heard a few weeks ago. You are beautiful. You are powerful. You can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens you. Remember? That's how God feels about you. That's how he feels about you. God has feelings just like you. He's hurt when we marry the devil, when we fornicate with the devil. Because he's our husband. And we, he, we belong to him. So he chose to introduce us, our family, to a company named Cello Bella, who provided respite care for my mom, helped in many ways. Even though they've recently been persecuting me for the truth I've been speaking about, some of the anti God people they have working there. And so God chose to touch my mom and dad. Mom first. Mom, I love you. With all my heart, my soul, and strength. You mean more to me than words could ever express. And Dad, I wrote you a love letter that begins to express my gratitude and indebtedness to you. And you're the next one who's going to go from being God, on God's naughty list to on his nice list. If it hasn't happened already. <laughs> <laughs> Because I believe you may have confessed the Lord Jesus this morning in church and become his spouse forever. <laughs> Just like Mom did on July 6th. Because that's when Mom eternally married Jesus. Praise God. Praise God for the triumph of the victory. Yeah. Praise God. About 3 in the morning. you know, And God had awakened me to look at the Bible for some things that he wanted me to learn for this sermon. And Mom got up and sat next to me on the couch. Mom prompted, and God prompted me, the leader, to confess her need for and loyalty to Jesus Christ, which she did in the most beautiful, submissive, meek, humble, and loving way. And Mom became a true Christian for the first time in her life. And now you know, Mom, you know, without a doubt, what you've been hoping for so many years, that Jesus has a spot reserved for you in heaven by his Son for your faith. For your love for him. He's going to recreate you every moment until you're by his side. And as you get conformed to his beautiful image and become more and more beautiful, more and more powerful, and do more and more things through Christ who strengthens you, the spines are going to burn off. And you can become a spine free cactus. <laughs> and the cactus, it's, shaped, it's in the shape of a cross, isn't it? Right? We're just little miniature crosses that bear our cross. And really, that's all that remains is the cross, because we die. We go bye-bye. And the only thing that's left is Jesus. 
process. Right? It's only things like <laughs> phrase, yeah. So, you know, congratulations, Mom, on your permanent promotion. You're a teacher and an evangelist, and uh, I think one day you're going to be anointed prophetess by God. As my true fellow servant Anastasia had recently. Go back to the story. So the spirits of pride and control. Wicked, evil, corrupt, selfish, destructive, and just plain rude. I'm telling you, this is how I became when I saw the truth about some of the folks at Celebella and when the, what they're trying to do to my dad. I became controlling, prideful, because that's the way they were. You know, they're trying to murder him by over-medicating him slowly and gradually into a zombie-like state and then eventually into death. Maybe that's why they call it hospice care. But anyways, God revealed to me the truth that some forms of hospice care actually legalize murder. So, take a stand as I did, and they will call Adult Protective Services and the police on you. Mm -hmm. That's what happened. When their income gets threatened, they will declare war on you. A war of lies and false accusations. My brother and sister were also involved in the attack that came against me because of the devil's wrath and having eternally lost my mom's soul. <clears throat> but God delivered me out of the lines, out of the corrupt, wrongful, evil, prideful, and controlling use of the authorities against Jesus. Because it wasn't me the devil was persecuting and attacking, it was my Lord and Commander, and thankfully my rescuer and conqueror, which is the name of my truck. So, conquer, because we are all more than conquerors in Christ Jesus who has overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil, as we do by his blood, by our testimony, and by our faith worked out through patience as we wait on him to move those mountains aside so we can walk in authority into the blessed life he has planned for each and every one of us. He's had plans since before we were even born, since before we were in a twinkling in our dad's eye. And yes, because I was staying with my parents for a month, which was necessary for me to receive part of my inheritance from Jesus. There wasn't much room for that magical twinkle between my parents. And so, now that God has provided me with a 17-foot trailer with faithful givers to support the ministry, they can once again fall back in love and eventually renew their vows in front of me and you and many more who are coming to the true faith and true service to Jesus Christ, that they might receive the intimacy from Him. That is the ultimate reward for obedience. Intimacy is a reward for obedience. And so, life is a cactus. We got to get into the meat of the message, and then we got another song, and we'll be done. So, see, all right, the meat of the message, Ephesians 4 17 through 24. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord. That ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Blindness of their heart. You've got a soft heart or a blind, hard heart. Everybody here? Everybody online? Soft heart. Moldable heart. Conformable heart, loving heart, submissive heart, yeah. powerful heart, yeah. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. That's like worshiping pleasures. To work all uncleanness with greediness. We talked about greed before, all the gambling. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. That's the spines that we've acquired. Our old way of living, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And then he put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Let's see what we got on. So, put on the new man, put on the new woman. If you're a child, put on the new child. Or youth, put on the new youth. <coughs> We're all new creations. All things are made new. Every part of us is going to be recreated by Jesus to be just like him. 
So here's a song that's in Spanish, but you can see the English translation right underneath her, so you can have understanding. Because really, you know, I was studying the Word this weekend. Dad gave me the revelation this morning. This morning we were in Titus chapter 2, which talks about the duties of wives and husbands. A lot of people argue this, but argue against this, but the Bible clearly states one of the duties of a wife is to obey her husband. And they want to take the word obey out of the marriage vows because they don't think it's godly, but is, is the Bible true or is it a lie? I think it's true. So, anyway, he showed me that we have to speak in a way that gives people understanding of the Word of God. So that's what I'm hoping I'm doing for everybody here and everybody online is speaking in a way that helps you understand the hidden truths that are between the lines. you got to read between the lines. I've got a song called Inattention that I'll sing sometime in the next few weeks that shows us got to read between the lines because you know the Bible it's an encrypted message because the lost is not for the lost it's for the saved it's for the obedient for the soft of heart for the moldable the ones that are servants it's for us to understand and have blessings from and wisdom from about what's happening in this world and what's about to happen so it's called the Rey de mi corazón the king of my heart Soy nada sin tu fe y amistad, Señor, mi Señor. Soy nada sin tu muerte en la cruz, amor, mi amor. Me importa nada solamente tú, Jesús. Jesús, soy vivo contigo en tu casa, casa santa, mi alma es tuyo, caballero de mi cielo, el rey de mi corazón. Sangre preciosa, Señor, mi Señor, soy rico en tu reina eterna, amor, mi amor, palabra de verdad, mi libertad, Jesús, mi Jesús.
do this one more time. I, I'm pretty sure everybody here has had a, a eternal commitment to Jesus, but I'm going to just do the prayer one more time. Lord Jesus, please reveal to everybody here the truths that you have for each one of us individually to receive and share with each other because there are many parts but one body. We are your body, Lord Jesus. Our members are the members of Christ, of you, Lord Jesus Christ. We don't give our members to anybody but you, Lord Jesus. We don't make love to anybody but you, Lord Jesus, and our worldly spouse, Lord Jesus, because other than anything else is fornication and adultery and wicked and evil. And so we just thank you for the truths today that you've shared with us. I pray you go and protect everyone here. Bless everyone here for their generosity. We multiply every penny they give to this ministry a thousandfold, Lord Jesus. For the next month, every penny that gets given in this ministry shall be multiplied a thousandfold by Jesus Christ according to His plan, His will, and His joy when we are cheerful givers to Him and His house. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing everybody here obediently with an open mind and an open heart to receive you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for giving us intimacy as our reward for loving you and for serving you. I lift up all our families, Lord Jesus, to you for all the needs that we that we have in our hearts, Lord Jesus, all the desires that you placed in our hearts, that you would continue to work those out, Lord Jesus, so we can receive them. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, for our government, uh, for the world, for all the fighting that's going on, Lord Jesus. I pray for everybody to seek you, Lord Jesus, and receive the peace that you give to everybody that has their mind stayed on the God of peace. Lord Jesus, help us to remain peaceful as we go through the storms and go through the challenges, as we get the spines burned off of us by the flames of life, Lord Jesus, and become spineless cactuses, true crosses, Lord Jesus, submitted and dead to everything but you. In Jesus' name we pray.